Well, let me come and give you a short overview of uh, this lecture, Semantics for Mobile Networks. The background here is that uh, I simply see that the mobile networks uh, have dominated the world. We have more than 4 billion subscribers. The speed of development is continuing and we see that basically each and everything will be on the network and will talk on the network. And the mobile phone will be your representation in the digital world. The background here is that the mobile phone actually has the possibility of creating uh, identities, caring identities, and distribute them to everywhere. This identity handling is going to happen on the SIM card. The SIM card, um, being so far a rather limited device, has grown to become a device uh, carrying a Java smart card and has capabilities of typically a fast USB with 8 to 12 megabits per second and a near field communication area. Near field communication is the wireless technology for very short range, typically for 0 to 4 centimeters, where, which can be used for payment and access. When we talk about payment, we typically talk about uh, standards like uh, the Philips MyFair, we talk about Desfire, we talk about the electronic transport card, which is going to be a standard in, amongst others, in Norway. And the whole background here is that you will be able to download money to your phone and then pay directly from your phone. It's not only the money which then makes you become traceable. You will open your door with a phone, you will enter a cinema with a phone and all other areas. And all these areas will contribute that basically you are traceable. And that simply means it's not only the location which already today is captured in the network, but it's all the other aspects too. So, how to allow people to have privacy and anonymity is one of the big challenges for people when dealing with mobile phones and mobile phones connecting to all the sensors, being that health sensors like your heart rate, your blood sugar pressure or others, or sensors of your home like entry door and others. Uh, this can be extended by into the dimension of the Internet of Things. Uh, I expect that the mobile phone will act as a gateway to dozens of sensors communicating in an Internet of Think thinking. And the Internet of Things there simply means that if we have like 5 million subscribers in the mobile network today, or we had them in 2010, we will soon see some 30 to 50 million devices talking on the mobile network. And these things will not only communicate to each other, they will communicate to processes and they will require a measurable security uh, in the network. The reason for that is that if companies are building their processes around the data, you would like to have a trust indicator or um, a security indicator for those data. And as we discussed before, security is always a trade-off between the threats on the one side and the system being able to deal with threats on the other side. And that loop is always like changing. So while, example, the GSM standard was good enough in 1985, and the keys being used there were only to be able to be traced by uh, the police, the GSM standard in 2012 is easy to be hacked by basically whatever PC which is on the market. And it wouldn't take you more than a minute or so to crack that security key that we talked uh, two weeks ago. 
about that. So when, when you now think about that, you may have sensors and you build your infrastructure around it, whether it's logistics or whether it's car-to-car -car communication, whether you want to have collision avoidance, then you have to make sure that that what you measure is actually that what is real. So that you not suddenly get a signal which, yet, uh, which lets you think or the system think of something completely different. So that is one of the areas where uh, what you find there is the security metrics, simply the link between threats on the one side and infrastructure on the other side. We then went one step further and said, well, the, get, the world is getting much more complex and our services towards me as being the end users have much more challenges. Like me as a person, I have uh, privacy requirements, as I have like location requirements. Given the example that in a classroom, I'm willing to share the context and the related documents uh, with all of you. In a hostile environment where I don't know anyone, I would like to even keep my privacy for myself, not being traceable not to tell anyone who I am. And that leads us to what we call the context-aware personal services, where the context-awareness simply says, where am I, with whom am I together with, and what am I doing? And those things will then decide or give me a suggestion on what things I'm sharing, what things I'm announcing. And when we talk about personalized services, we have always the trade-off saying that the more I tell the system, the better the system will be to give me a service which I will really like. Thus, if I tell everything about myself, the service will be very much traced towards what I need. But if I don't tell anything, well, then the service can't fit. But then again, uh, the approaches of Apple having stored the location of each and every one and uh, some Google attributes now of basically linking the information of people together, that one makes it much more difficult to keep uh, private information private. So our approach is here that can we define some policies and these policies being like, if I'm in a foreign country, I wouldn't like to use the internet for video. And I would like from emails only to download the header and the top three lines in order not to pay that much for data services. As being one of an example of a context-aware service. And uh, this set of policies is something which we see which have to be developed in order to help users to get recommendations for the system doing what the user wants. Uh, well, that was basically it. The last part, which we didn't really find time to get into, was the part of the semantics, where semantic technologies may help us to do the link between our the web and the semantic web, meaning the annotated web, where we tell the web what kind of information is there in terms of RDF and OWL, and where we lift that up to a new dimension, the web of services, where we, we actually have a service or a web service description, which will then have us to have a fully automatic solution or fully automatic recommendations for each and every one of us. If you have further questions, don't hesitate and write them here on the discussion page for Unique 2250 in Semantics for Mobile Networks. Thank you for having followed this summary.